Now, autism rates are on the rise around the world, particularly in developed countries. In France, the rate has tripled in the past 10 years. And to mark World Autism Day, France 24's Emerald Maxwell has done a report on this and she's with me now to tell us a bit about what she's been finding out. Emerald, look, thanks for coming in. Are autism rates increasing just because we're more aware of the condition now and thus we're screening for it more? Well, Nadia, that certainly explains part of the rise. Uh, about half of it can be explained by better screening. Uh, but scientists say that doesn't explain the exponential rise we've seen across the world. In France, it's now 1% of the population that's mm. been diagnosed with autism. In the United States, it's 1.7%. Um, and of course, we already know that it's a genetic condition. Scientists have identified genes associated with autism. But sometimes cases appear to come out of the blue. Um, and that was the case... For the family we filmed it with for our report, uh, it was a family of five who have an autistic child, Elena, who's four going on five, and they'd done all the genetic testing and they hadn't found anything to explain uh, her autism. And so they had decided to take part in a major study in Montpellier, which is where my colleague and I went to report. Uh, the working hypothesis behind the study is that environmental conditions, uh, pollution, such as pollution, are also playing a part in this exponential rise. Uh, and they say that because our genes are simply unable to mutate or evolve uh, that fast. That's just not how uh, evolution works. Uh, but what has transformed in the last few decades is our environment and how polluted it, it is. Uh, so let's take a listen now to Professor Bagdadli, who's leading the study. Depuis 50 ans, our exposure to chemicals has increased 100-fold over the last 50 years. We're exposed to chemicals on a daily basis through a variety of routes. And we already have studies showing a neurological impact on animals of the exposure to pesticides, for instance. And Emerald, the interviewee there mentioning studies on animals. Are there any studies out there that allow us to observe this effect in humans? Well, yes, there are some in the United States. Mm. Uh, they did a study at Harvard University, which concluded that a woman exposed to high levels of air pollution during pregnancy was twice as likely to have an autistic child. And France generally lags behind in studies of autism, but it's making up for it now with this Marianne cohort in Montpellier, uh, where they're trying to establish how this link works between pollution and developmental disorders like autism. Um, if it is proved that this link is shown to be true, it would be just the latest in a lengthening uh, list of risks uh, that uh, pollution have been shown to have on our development, on, on our health. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking, for, for example, of the impact of fine particles on cancer or endocrine disruptors on fertility, for instance. Um, and although I should say here that some people with autism object to this view of their condition as a disability, uh, and indeed some of the researchers looking into its origins are in fact autistic. Mm. Uh, and in their view, autism, autis people with autism aren't disabled, uh, but neurodivergent. Mm. which means that there is a neurotypical majority of the population and a neurodivergent minority who have ADHD, autism, and so on. And for advocates of this, this view, it's not just a question of language, but also a question of inclusion. Uh, because if autistic people are no longer perceived as disabled, then it's not their condition uh, that's the problem. Uh, it's actually society which isn't including them. And that certainly seemed to be the case for Elena, who we followed in our report. Uh, she's facing a lot of hurdles. For instance, she can't get into a school uh, that will support her. Uh, she has an eight-year waiting list for a school, a special needs school in her area. And her family is really struggling because there just simply aren't the structures in place in France to support her. All right, such an interesting story, an important one as well. Emerald Maxwell, thank you very much indeed for coming in to tell us a bit about your reporting.